Hi everyone, we'll start the class at 9.
five today. Hi everyone. So we'll start the class now. Uh, give me one second. Okay. Cool. So I'll open up my VS Code as usual. Let's bring up this folder. Okay. Let's continue from where we left off. In the last class, the last thing we spoke about was how we can use the functions as values, right? So we've also seen what are function expressions. Uh, we have seen them both. Let's carry on from there. It's blur, is it? Okay, one second. Give me one second. Guys, can you hear me? Okay. And is my screen better now? Keshav and Avinash, can you also confirm? Okay. So let's continue from where we left off uh, and open up my script.js file. So the last thing we spoke about was how we can use function expressions, right? So just as a refresher, uh, you can create a function sum like this, which takes a couple of arguments, returns a plus b. This is a normal function. But if you want to create a function expression for the same function exactly, then what we can do is create a const variable or a let variable doesn't really matter. You can do a const or let and give a sum and then do uh, function a comma b return a plus b. Now these both are exactly the same. There is no difference in both of them uh, as implementation. Okay? There is one small difference, which is basically about hoisting, but that we'll get to a little bit later on, uh, because that's kind of an advanced topic for now. Okay? But so just remember that you can either create a function using a function keyword like this, or you can use a function expression like this. Okay? Now remember, this works because in a programming language like JavaScript, the functions are treated as any other values. Okay. Like how you simply give a number as a value to a variable, or you give a string as a value to a variable, you give an array or, or, or give an array or an object as a, as a value to a variable, right? You can even give a function also as a value to any variable. That's where this basically works. Now you obviously can give a name here, or you can give whatever name you want, you can give the name sum also. But honestly, in this case, it doesn't really matter because ultimately whatever the name you give here, this function will be called with this name. Okay. Like for example, I can basically call it some like this now. Okay. This is a function expression. And we also saw that we can create an array like this. And uh, let's say I have function function sum a comma b return a plus b. This is one kind of function. I'll create a function called subtraction. Subtract a comma b and and we return a minus b so we have two kinds of functions right now again both of them like one is a normal function this is a function expression now because the functions are treated as any other values right which means you can create an array like this and you can add these functions as values to this array which means you can simply do something like this give sum give subtract okay this might seem weird at first but it's totally normal because all you're doing is you're adding two functions as values to this array, which means the, uh, the first element of this array is right now pointing towards the sum function. Okay. And the second element of this array will point towards this function right here. Okay. If I have to call this function, which means I have to call the array a first element, I can do it using array of zero. Okay. Which is the sum function. Once we reach the sum function, now remember that this part is nothing but it's sum. Okay, like array of zero 
nothing but the sum itself. Okay. If I have to call this function, I have to call this function right here like this. Okay. Remember this part is equal to this part, and if I have, huh? Abhishek, I had already answered this multiple times in the previous class. Oh, can somebody else answer Abhishek's question, please? I'll see if anybody remembers. And why is it? Why is the answer no, Himanshu? Can somebody tell me why we shouldn't be giving parentheses within the array here? It's not about objects. See, it's simple thing. Ah, so Himanshu's calls basically uh, the difference between doing this and doing this. This is when you're giving this uh, this thing here. You're simply passing that passing the function ka reference here. So simply passing the function as a value to this array, which means you're passing the function itself, not what it is returning. But if you call the function like this, okay. Basically, what this means is you're calling the function, which means you call this function, whatever is being returned, that will be stored within this array here. But we don't want to store the return value of sum, right? We want to show the sum function itself. There's a big difference between them. Okay. Whenever you add parentheses beside a function, you always call the function at that particular point itself, which means Within the array here, you will be calling this function. You're not simply uh, passing this function as a value to this array. You're actually calling the function, and whatever the function is returning, that will be stored as a value within this array right now. Okay. Like let's say for example, you have a function uh, one, which simply returns like ten. Let's say. A function two will return like thirty-five or something. Like this. Now, if I want to store the numbers of ten and thirty-five within an array, I can basically do this. I'll call one. I'll call two. Okay. Now, the way this works is, and if I do a console dot log of array, I'll go live with this. Let's open up inspect element. Okay. Now, if you see, I have an array of ten and thirty-five. Now, what exactly is happening here is at this point of time, when JavaScript engine will come across this line, it starts from the right side, because whenever you have an assignment operation, an assignment operation, you start from the right. Okay. Whatever is there here, that will be assigned to this variable of array here. Okay. Which means we start from here, and because we have an array, we start from the first element. Now, what is the first element? Now, within the first element here, because we're calling the function, okay, you're not simply passing the function; you're calling the function here, which means you ultimately end up calling this function, and whatever is returned from that, that will be stored here. Which means this one will be called, and ten will be returned, and ten will be stored inside this place here. And then we move to the next spot, which is this one. We have the function two, which means we call up this function. When we call this function, whatever is returned from it, that will be stored inside the array here. And thirty-five will be added at this spot, and hence we get an array of ten and thirty-five. Because okay, there's a big, big, big difference between these guys. I'll tell you one more simple thing also. If the const value is equal to one. Okay. If I do a console log of a value right now, what do you think the value will be? What will this print? It'll print ten. You're correct because I'm calling the function one, which means I'm calling this, and this returns the value of ten, and ten will be stored inside this value variable here. That's how this works. Now. But if I simply pass this one ka function, see, there's a big difference between this and 
and this yahan par i am calling the function and whatever the function is returned that will be assigned to this value variable but here i am simply passing the function itself as a value to this value variable okay again this uh, works in javascript because in javascript all functions are treated as values also okay which means the function can be treated as a value which means it can be passed uh, can be passed inside another variable okay now the thing is we if i do a console log of this one you'll see that i have a function here this value variable is pointing to this one ka function basically okay which means uh, now there are two ways of calling this one function the first way is this calling this okay we simply do this i'm calling this function which obviously works but the other way of calling this uh, one function is because i'm passing this one function to this value variable i can simply do this if i'm calling value i'm basically calling one any questions here okay so now so extending this if i create a, a variable of 2 and 1 like this okay uh this case what are the values inside this array what is the first element inside this array right now this time what is the first element of this array it's function 2 it's not the value itself it's the function 2 right okay and what about this what about the second value within this array it will always be 10 theek hai so basically this value if i do a console log of this value now let's see what we get see we have an array here But the second element is a number ten. But the first element itself is the function. See, we have the function two. That's what it says. See, when I hover over it, observe what I'm getting here. See, see, observe here. It's telling you what it's what basically contains, right? So that's what this thing is. Just remember that there's a very big difference between passing a function and calling a function. and passing a function like this is a big difference between them both okay what i'm saying is there's a big difference between uh, when you pass a function without calling it and when you when you call the function when you're calling the function or let me try to see if i can explain with the help of a diagram Let's say we have a function like this, which is this. This is the function we currently have. Now the difference between this and this is there is a big difference between them both. Now, <clears throat> difference here is that when I'm call or uh, when I'm passing this one to any variable, right? Let's say if there's a variable called const stuff is equal to And if I do one here, like this, if I do one, this one simply refers to the entire function itself. Okay, because remember the this function ka name is one. I mean, if, I mean, if passing this one to a variable like this, you're simply passing this whole function as a uh, as a value to this variable. The whole function. Okay. that's what this basically means but if you actually do this if you do if you call this one function like this okay if you actually call this one function like this then this one refers to the return value only this is the return value because remember you're calling the function now what happens when you call a function the function always returns something right in this case because we are returning something explicitly like this number 10 that number 10 will be returned from this one 
it will be captured by this variable which means this time the stuff ka variable contains this value of 10 because of calling the function i'm calling it here i'm not just passing it i'm calling the function here right but like i said if i don't call the function if i simply do this this one refers to the entire function here pura function which means this one will now refer to this which means this stuff also refers to the same function right now which means if i do a one like this okay so i can either do this or i can either do stuff both of them will basically call the same function here is it clear now prakash okay cool <clears throat> let's get back to this so we're done with this uh, okay the next very important topic right now is what we call higher order functions higher order function now again this might seem like a very a very complex term but actually very simple uh, very simple concept okay thing is uh, the functions that accept other functions okay so these functions first of all they accept other functions i mean as arguments basically or they return a function Higher order functions can do either one or both of these together. Okay, let's see what I mean by that. So let's say that uh, I have a function called call twice. Okay. Now I will give uh, I'll create one more function called as laugh. This laugh will just console log this thing. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to pass this laugh function inside this function so that this function can call this laugh function twice. Now again, I know this might seem very weird. Like why are we passing one function to another function? But thing is in JavaScript, it's totally possible. Now other programming languages, they do not allow this. Like functions can't accept functions as arguments. But in JavaScript, it's totally possible. In fact, we do a lot of things with this, uh, with this capability, especially in React. Okay, so the fact that we can pass one function as an argument to another function. Now, this function will have access to this function, and this function can do anything with this function. Let's see what I mean by that. So let's say that I call twice. I pass. So I'm calling this function now, but instead of passing an array. Or an object, or a number, or a boolean value, or a null, or an undefined, or all of this. I'm passing another function as an argument now, which means basically functions accept anything as an argument, including another function. Now I'm going to call this function by passing this function as an argument. The way we can do it again is I simply pass this laugh here. That's it. Okay. Again, don't do this. There's a big difference between this and this guy. There's a very big difference between both of them. Okay. Par kya hoga ki first of all, we will be calling this function and whatever will be returned from it, that will be sent as an argument to this function. Okay. Let me demonstrate what I mean by that. Let's say that this laugh function is right now returning like this. Okay. Now what will happen if I do a call twice of laugh is this laugh will actually be called, which means this function will be called. And whatever is being returned, which is the string, the string will be added to this part here, which means basically we convert this to call twice of like this. Because remember, whenever you call a function, you always replace this call with the return value. 
just keep this thing whenever you call a function replace the call with the return value okay very simple simple thing you call a function which means you replace this entire call replace this with whatever you're returning from the function which is this part here and that's what happens here okay this time see if i just check what the argument is i'll just say stuff i'll, I'll do a control log of stuff i get a value of he she here because remember that i'm calling the function which means which means i'm replacing this call with the string the string will be called like this and basically i'm simply calling this call me uh, the call based function with the string which is being accepted here i'm console logging that here okay so is it clear so far guys okay but next what if i simply pass this here and let me change this to console log of hehe now what is happening is i am not calling the function i am passing this entire function itself as an argument to this call twice function which means this laugh here will be replaced by this function okay which means this call twice function will now receive this function as a parameter here and when i save it see i get the function itself makes sense so call twice function is right now receiving this laugh function as an argument which i'm just console logging it here okay so now if i actually want to console log the laugh function guys within this one what do i do now i know that stuff right here is simply referring to this laugh laugh function right this thing is clear for us which means if i basically want to call my laugh function if i want to call my laugh function like this i have to call my stuff function like this because remember the stuff is nothing but it's pointing towards this laugh function so when i do a stuff like this i'm simply calling this function when i save it see i i console log here right now because the stuff right here is calling this laugh function yes is this clear okay cool okay so sure. i'll repeat now what i'm saying is okay so right now we have this laugh function let's focus on this one first so yeah the simple function it simply console logs hey hey that's nothing else this uh, function is doing now i have one more function here now this function can actually accept other functions as arguments now whenever there is a function which accepts other functions as arguments we call them as higher order functions so a higher order function are those functions which accept other functions as arguments now all i'm doing is i'm calling this call twice function i'm calling it right here i'm passing this laugh as an argument here see i'm not calling it like this this is wrong again i mean wrong in the sense like this will simply be replaced by whatever is being returned here theek okay? hai so but i simply want to pass the function like this I want to pass the function like this, and this function will now be passed as an argument to call twice function, which means the call twice function here receives this laugh function as an argument. Okay, remember, uh, look at the flow here. You call twice. What are you passing? You're passing this laugh function. Laugh is nothing but this function here, and this function is being passed as an argument to this function now this function receives this function right here which means the stuff here 
is basically nothing but the laugh function right now when you uh, when you call stuff you're actually calling the laugh function here when i hit save i get hee hee like this that's it okay okay now one more thing is um what if this function actually accepts some arguments let's say that it it accepts um argument of message okay which i want to console log right here so right now what will happen is when i'm calling stuff i'm simply calling laugh but am i passing any arguments to laugh right now no which means when you don't pass any arguments to this function this parameter will have a default value of what guys i had mentioned this earlier so whenever i'm calling a function but i'm not passing any parameters uh i'm not passing any arguments then the parameter here will have a default value of undefined like, like ravi is saying theek okay? hai so now I, when i hit save i get undefined here but let's say that i actually want to pass something to my laugh uh, thing here yeah? so i just want to pass like ha ha like this i have to simply pass the same thing to my stuff here I hit save. I get this. Okay. So, which means you actually can pass whatever arguments you want to this function as well. Okay. So. Um, let's look at more examples i want to create a function call call three times now this will basically accept a function like this i mean it basically accepts a function as a parameter or an argument uh, let me call i mean let me create one more function here called cry or can we pass arguments in laugh where we are calling call twice function you can uh, you can moment that's what we did earlier right you can pass arguments to laugh also okay let's look at this example now so i have a function called cry i'll just say like console dot log i am am so sad that we have this function now i want to pass this function as an argument to this function so i'll simply call the call three times function and i'll pass this cry as a function as an argument here now this f here uh, this f here f here is simply pointing to the cry function it means if i have to call the cry function like this i have to simply call the f function like this okay and if i want to add any arguments to the cry function okay if this needs any arguments like let's say one or two whatever i have to pass those arguments to my f function here okay now i'll simply call my f function once and twice and then thrice this is totally possible like i said so whatever function is being received inside this function here that function can be called multiple times now when i hit save i get this console of thrice because this f is simply pointing towards the cry function and the cry function is being called once here and then twice and then thrice over here okay so is this example clear guys okay so one more uh, let's say we have one other function here called function rage and this is called console.log of i hate everything now uh, so, yeah, instead of calling this call three times with the cry function i want to call the rage function 
time I get this I hate everything, which is this one printed like thrice. Okay, again, remember the, uh, there's a big difference between calling rage like this and passing this rage like this and passing this rage like this. In fact, in this case, we are not even passing function as an argument. We're actually, we're actually passing whatever the return value of the rage function is. Okay. Can somebody guess what, what exactly uh, will we be passing in, in this case? Like what value will, will we be passing in this case? Hmm. So Keshav is right. It will be undefined. Because guys, remember, this is console log. Okay, this console log is different from return. Now. now, within a function, when you don't have anything to be returned explicitly, like if you're if you're not going to use the return keyword explicitly, then by default you will be returning undefined. Okay, so when you don't return anything within a function, by default you always return. By default you always return undefined. Okay. So yeah, let's get rid of this. I'll tell you one more thing. So instead of doing call three times, what I'll do right now is I'll say function repeat n times. Now this takes an action, or let's say this takes a function. It takes a number. What this function will basically do is, based on the number here, you call this function those many times. Like if the number is two, okay, then you call the function two times. Call, call two times. Okay. If the if the number is ten, then you pass this, uh, and then you call this function ten times like this. Okay. So how can we do this? So let's say that I will I will call this repeat n times ka function. I'll pass this cry function. I'll pass a number. Let's say I want to call it ten times. Okay. Now it's a simple logic. Okay, so, so if I want to loop from one to ten, what can I do, guys? If I have to loop from one to ten, which, what kind of loop can I use? So I have two options. I can either use a for loop, okay, or I can use a while loop also. I can use either of them. So while loop, me, what do I have to initialize a variable with i, all of those things. So I leave that to you, but. I'll create a for loop here. So I'll simply do a for uh, that i is equal to zero. Let's say i less than num. Those many times will start. We will do i plus plus. Okay. Again, so first of all, we'll just do a console log of i for now. Let's see what we get. So we get zero to nine. So we have ten numbers here. Okay, because we have ten. If I do a try of two, then we have two numbers here. Which means this logic is correct. Now within this thing, I can simply take the function. I'll simply call it. As simple as that. So when I hit save, I get, I'll do a 10. What happens in Chrome console is when a, when a particular console log is being repeated multiple times, we get that number here. Because the dev, um, because the, uh, because the Chrome console here does not want to clutter your space. So basically, you, so instead of uh, printing this like 10 times here, it'll simply print it once. It'll tell you how many times uh, there has been a console log. OK? Basically, because of given number 10 here, I can see like 10 console logs being printed here. OK? So. I simply do a for loop here and whatever function I get, I'm simply calling that function. That's it, as simple as that. Okay, so, so, the, so all of this works because, uh, so all of this works because we have a function which can be passed as an argument to another function. Okay. Now I'll show you one more example. 
let's say we had a function called f pick one. Now this pick one function receives two arguments, and both the arguments are functions. So it uh, uh, receives f one and f two. Now both f one and f two are functions only. Now what this function will do is, if every time you call this function and you pass into a function here, it will randomly call only one of them. Okay. Now randomness के बारे में, because we know math dot random, we'll do that. So we'll say const random number is equal to math dot random. Now guys, we know one thing about math dot random, which is If math dot random ka values are always between zero to zero point nine 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 nine, okay? This basically means that the midpoint is somewhere at zero point five. This is the midpoint. Now to get like of uh, two random values, see, I can say that if I mean this is one equal half, right? And this one equal half. So I can say that. Basically, I can say that if my random number is less than zero point five, then maybe I'll call my f one function, or else I'll simply call my f two function like this. Okay. Now, if you look at this one, uh, so let me create my f one and f two functions. So I'll say uh, const func one. Is equal to a function. I'll do a console dot log of first function called. We create the same function. I'll do func two, and this will be second function called. I'll call my pick one function. I'll pass my func one and func two as the arguments. And this time the first function was called. If I hit save again, this time the second function got called. So first, first, first. In the second, first, first, like that. So it's basically random. So it works because of this thing here. So the middle point is always zero point five. So you can check that it's either less than zero point five or greater than zero point five. So it's like almost, uh, almost like fifty fifty percent chances. That's why this works here. Now uh, we can clean this up a little bit. Basically saying that I remove the else part. I say if the random number is less than zero point five, then do f one and simply return from it. Okay. नहीं तो then do f two. So this also totally works, and this thing does exactly the same what we did before. The only advantage with this is uh, see basically whenever you use the else right, so else adds some like nesting. It makes the code a little bit uh, more difficult to read. But when you use a return keyword like this, it makes your code much more simple to read and understand. Okay, so within this, you basically are checking if the random number is less than zero point five. Now, it is. Uh, if it is less than zero point five, you simply call the function. You return from it. That's it. And in case if it is not less than zero point five, we don't even enter this block of code. We simply run f two function. That's it. ठीक है, so is this clear, guys? Cool. So, all right. So next we'll go on to the next part, which is the functions as return values. Functions as return values. Now again, just as a recap, so far what we've seen is the functions. so they can be assigned as a value to a variable we have seen that already second thing it can do is can be uh, passed as arguments to a function is also possible a third thing we'll see is can be returned as a value from a function okay see these three things Basically, make the functions behave as first, first class citizens. Remember, I told you this. Uh, it's in last class. So basically, the functions in JavaScript are treated as first class citizens. 
which basically means that functions act like any other values. See, just like an array or an object, it can be assigned to a variable. Okay, and just like any other, I'm just like any primitive value or object or array, they can be passed as arguments to a function, right? Normally, when we call a function, we uh, we pass numbers or strings and all of that as an argument to a function, right? But it is possible to pass other functions as arguments to a to a to a function again. Okay. Now what we'll check is a function can also return a function again. Now again, think about this. When you have a function, we have seen that we can return any type of value, right? We can either return an object, an array, a number, string, boolean, null, whatever it is. We can return whatever we want from a function. We can also return a function also from a function. Let's see how that actually works. I'll give a simple example. Let's create a function here called as um, multi. I'll just create a simple function first. So I'll say a function outer. Now what I'll do here is I will do a function here, function inner, and I'll just do console log of of inner function called. Okay. Now, uh, so if you observe, when I call my outer function, we are calling the outer function, but is the inner function actually being called? No, we are not calling the inner function anywhere. So we can call the inner function with the outer function, but just doing this. Now, because of this, what happens is, when I call my outer function here, I enter this function. I first of all see that there is a function called as inner and I keep it in my memory. And then when I come across this inner call here, then I'll take this out of the memory and I'll call it. So when I hit save right now, you get inner function called. Okay. But instead of calling the function, I can even do a return of inner. Again, remember a function can return anything from itself, right? Like a function can return a number, array, whatever it is. But a function can also return another function. Now, when the outer function is called, I'm returning the inner function. I'm not calling it anywhere. I'm not calling the function at all. I'm simply returning the function so that once this function will be called, we return the inner function, which will be captured in a variable like this. Let's say const uh, the inner func. Okay. Remember, the outer function is now simply returning the inner function, which is then captured inside this variable called inner, uh, inner function, which means right now, this inner functions uh, simply points towards this inner function here. Okay, this inner function here simply points towards this inner function here. Now, if I have to call this inner function, I have to call this, I have to call this here, right? If I have to call this function, I have to, if I have to do this, I simply have to call this function because remember, this inner function is simply pointing towards this inner function. So, if I have to call this function, so I have to actually call this one. Now, if I do the inner function like this, then I get inner function called a result. So is this clear, guys? OK. Now, one more way of returning a function from another function is, this is one way, obviously. Or I can simply do a const inner. I'll remove this thing. So this is also the same exact thing, no change. But one more way we can actually do is simply return a function like this. This is also totally valid. So I'm saying I want to return this function.
Rohit, I'll get to that, Rohit. I'll get to that a little later. Okay. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm returning this entire function here, which means this inner func will now be pointing towards this entire function like this. And that's where this still works. Now remember one thing. So anyway, this outer function when it is called, it is returned to us this function. Okay. Now, anyway, because this function will be captured inside this variable, I don't even have to give this name here. Because anyway, this function is, being, is going to be stored inside a variable name. And if I have to call this function, I have to call this function anyway, right? So there's no point of giving a name here. Guys, was this part also clear? Okay. Let's look at another example now. I'll do a function multiply. Uh, this gets a number. And this will be a little complex, by the way. What I want to do is I want to call this multiply function. I want to say, multiply by multiply by me kya denge will give a number like this okay now this will return to us a function which we can store in a variable like this const triple now what i want to do with this function is whatever value i give within this function like number three or four or whatever okay when i call this triple function now giving a number like this basically uh, i should be multiplying this five with three i'm saying key like multiply by will always return to us a function which can be called with whatever number we give here and that number will be tripled which means we're doing a five into five into five like this i mean uh, five into three sorry not five into five into five Okay, so like when I call triple right now with any number, right? I'm basically multiplying it by three. Like whatever number I'm passing here, I'm multiplying it by three. Let's see how that works. So we get a number this time. See, observe this number is simply pointing towards this number here. Okay, so which means right now num is three. Now we can return a function return a function okay this will be stored here now when that function is called that also is uh, receives a number here which means this function also receives a number here so let's call it as x for now and it should simply do a multiplication of this and this so we simply do a return x into num Let me break it on what is happening. So I'm saying multiply by three. This multiply by kya karega? It returns a function to you. Now this function can be called by any number, but whatever argument we initially supplied here, I'm saying that this function will simply multiply this with this. Multiply by three matlab, this triple function mein jo bhi argument hum dalenge, that will be multiplied by three. So here what's happening is we have an outer function here, which receives a number. Now this number is this number here. And we're simply returning a function here, which means this triple ka function is nothing but this function. Now, when I call this triple ka function with a number like this, I'm calling this function with a number like this. I'm simply multiplying uh, the X and number. If whatever was the original argument that I'm multiplying with this. Now, if I simply do a console.log of triple, get 15. Again, what I'm doing is multiply by kya kehta ki, see, 
uh, whatever function will be returned, right? When this function will be called with any number, that will be multiplied by three. So one more example is I'll do uh, cons double multiply by two. This time, what I can do is I can call this double functional pass whatever I want. Multiply function, multiply by function will return a function which can take any argument. And this double ka matlab kya hai ki it will be double. So 2 into 2 hoga. The same logic again works. So we return a function here. This function x is pointing to this number 2. And x will be 2 here. And num will be 2 here. Okay, guys, any questions here in this one? Okay, cool. So we'll take a small break, guys. It's 9.57. I'll see you back at 10.08, okay? Madhur, I'll just come back from the break and you can share it then, okay? Is it okay, Madhur? Okay, yeah, thanks.
guys i'm back and madhur you can uh, you can share your screen but is it regarding an assignment or is it something what is it regarding actually we have based on the question here uh function so let table zero i put as it running the copy is number the copy is undefined compared to friends a is not defined let's copy and paste it here Two console log of a comma b, we get a one and b zero. This is the stress. That makes sense. Returning a. Ah, so what exactly is the question? Other. So remember one thing: whenever you have a variable defined within a function, it can't be accessed outside the function, right? So this variable called a and b, uh, their scope is within this function only. now remember that like let and cons have a block scope now a function is also a block right so but the variables a and b they both are scoped towards and they their boundary is just this function so they can't be accessed outside of this function that's why get a uh, reference error outside ये वो टाइप ऑफ का ना वो ए और बी का टाइप ऑफ का इट्स कॉट टू विद द विंडो ऑब्जेक्ट सो विंडो ऑब्जेक्ट के बारे में आई आई टॉक व्हेन वी स्टार्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट व्हेन वी स्टार्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट डॉम बट इफ यू जस्ट वांट टू नो ना बेसिकली दिस दैट देयर इज एन ऑब्जेक्ट कॉल्ड एज विंडो ऑब्जेक्ट इट इज द टॉप लेवल ऑब्जेक्ट ठीक है सो व्हेनएवर यू ट्राई टू एक्सेस टू डू अ टाइप ऑफ बी ओके अम because there are no variables created within this one which has like a b variable there's no b variable right now it'll go and search that b variable on the window object the window may there is a b ka property okay that has a zero number that's why type of b is number okay but window dot a to kuch hai hi nahi undefined that's why it is undefined लेकिन विंडो के बारे में हम लोग बाद में बात करेंगे आई जस्ट गेव यू अ वेरी सिंपल लाइक अ ब्रीफ आइडिया ऑफ व्हाट व्हाई इट वर्क्स द वे इट वर्क्स राइट नाउ या यू कैन से बी इज ग्लोबल यस बट वी कैन ओवरराइड द क्रिएटिंग अ लाइक आर 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 ऑन बी हियर यू कैन से बी ट्रू इफ यू डोंट टाइप अ कंसोल लॉग ऑफ टाइप ऑफ बी यू गेट बूल इन दिस टाइम If you remove this, you get number because as we saw, uh, wait, window dot b. I think we just overridden. Uh, so it's not working. But let's do. Uh, okay. No, 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 no. Okay. Hmm. I think something else is happening here. ठीक है. I think you know what is happening. It's because of uh, of hoisting and var variable. ठीक है. But अभी इसके बारे में let's not get into that right now, mother. I'll save this question. I'll get to this once we start talking about uh, what hoisting. Okay. I'll surely get to that after that, okay? Cool. What a nice question, though. All right. So the next part we're going to talk about is what? Wait a minute. Hmm. We'll talk about callbacks right now. What are callbacks? Callbacks. Okay. Now, see, uh, higher order function is that function 
which basically takes another function as an argument, right? So whenever you pass a function to another function, the function that is being passed, that is called as the callback function because that function will be called back later on based on the parent function. Like for example, let's say that I create a function called parent. Okay. And this function parent, uh, where is the function called as child? And just to console log child called, child function called, we'll do this. I'll pass this child as a, to the function. Now, see, we've already done this before, right? Like, uh, we're passing one function as an argument to another function. Now, the thing is, whenever you, like, whatever function is being passed here, within the owner, uh, this is the owner function. This owns this function right now, right? So we're passing this child function as an argument to another function. Now this function here is called as a callback function. It's called a callback function because it will be called back by this parent whenever required. Like for example, wherever, like whenever the parent requires it, you can simply do a child like this. You can even add a condition like this. If true, only then uh, call a child function like this. Okay. If it is false, don't call it. Or it can call the child function multiple times like this. So one important point to remember here is, see, this function is called as a child. Uh, this function is called as a callback function. Because this function is called back by this parent function. Uh, multiple times like this. Okay, so this parent function is basically calling this child function multiple times like this. So, because this parent function receives a callback function, it's up to the parent function when to call the child function and how many times to call it. Because right now, this parent function owns this child function. Okay, which means that once you pass a function to the parent function like this, once you pass a callback, guys, it's up to the parent when to call it and how many times to call it. It's totally up to the parent function, right? Because now we can call it multiple times like this, or it can simply call it once. Okay. Or it can not call it at all. Wo bhi possibility hai. Okay, let's say fun, fn. Okay. You can either call it once, it can call it multiple times, it cannot call it at all. You can call it conditionally like this. Okay, so anything is basically possible with respect to callback function. You're, okay, so this function right here is called as a callback function. And is this clear? Let me repeat. So basically what I'm trying to say is there is a function called the parent function. Okay. This parent function receives a child function as an argument. Okay. Now this Fn right here, this Fn right here points to the child function, right? Which means if I have to call the child function, I have to simply call the Fn function. Like this, okay. Which means now because this child is a function that is being passed as an argument to another function, we call this child function as a callback function. The reason we call this callback function is this function can be called back by this parent function how many ever times it wants and whenever it wants. It's totally up to the parent function right now. Okay, basically what I'm trying to say is this parent function now takes complete ownership of this function. And this parent function can call this function how many ever times it wants, whenever it wants, conditionally and unconditionally. It's totally up to the parent function here. I can simply do an if condition like if true, like fn. Or I can simply do, I can do this also. 
ये भी पॉसिबल है कैन कॉल मल्टीपल टाइम्स लाइक दिस मैं सिर्फ ये कहना चाहता हूं कि दिस पेरेंट फंक्शन हैज कंप्लीट कंट्रोल ओवर दिस ओवर द कॉल बैक फंक्शन राइट नाउ एंड द पेरेंट फंक्शन कैन डू व्हाटएवर इट वांट्स विद द कॉल बैक फंक्शन ठीक है व्हिच मींस सी uh just by looking at this you cannot say what will the parent function do with the child function that's not possible to say okay it's not possible at all actually okay but if you look at the implementation here then you'll understand okay this parent function is calling this child function like four times next sense guys Guys, any questions? Ah, uh, yes, there can. So let's say you have one more parent, maybe a function, another parent. This also receives a function. Maybe this uh, only calls. Only if this is true, then calls this function. I can uh, uh, pass this call back like this. Now, guys, I'll tell you one thing. See, abhi tak before functions, whatever, uh, whatever you guys learned, uh, even if you did not practice every day, it's still fine because you guys can get it easily. But in functions, abhi to, uh, abhi se everything will become a little more complex and challenging. I'm not saying it is very difficult, but it will get more challenging for sure. And if you guys don't practice every single day, uh, the next class will feel very difficult. Okay, so whatever I taught. Like last week and this week, I mean, and today, just practice for sure every single day. Otherwise, you will lose touch, and things will start feeling more difficult. Okay? Abhi maine jo bhi padaya hai, it, I, I know it is little difficult to understand, but if you practice, it will get easier for sure. Okay? Let me just repeat four times. Uh, uh, I'm saying about this. Okay? Let me remove this. start from scratch again i'll tell you one last time now the point here is when you have a function let's say outer okay first try to understand one thing this is a function right uh, a function can receive any parameters let's say let's say param now what kind of parameters can we pass to a function can we pass a number is it possible to pass a number guys as an argument yes we get a number can we pass a string yes we can pass a string and is it possible to pass boolean yes we can we can pass a false also is it possible to pass a null yes it is undefined yes it is is it possible to pass an array definitely is it possible to pass an object definitely so far we have passed guys one second ha huh. i was saying that we have an inner function here which we can actually pass to the outer function here like i said the outer function can take any type of value we can either send a primitive values like uh, numbers strings and null undefined boolean all of that 
we can even pass arrays and objects also to a function like this as an argument but it is possible to pass another function as a function uh, within this function here what i mean by that is you can pass this inner function as an argument to this function okay remember don't do this when you do this you're passing the return value of this function uh, as an argument but not the function itself okay <clears throat> when you do this what exactly happens is whatever is the return value within this inner function which in this case is undefined that will be passed as an argument to the outer function which is not what we want what we want is we want to pass inner function as an argument itself to the outer function like this when i hit save as you can see i'm console log the parameter here which is nothing but the inner function itself right which you can see here now this is one of the things that functions can do in javascript right which is not possible in something like java where the functions can be passed as an argument on another function is this part clear now ha huh. now the last thing that is left is we can even return a function from another function and to understand that let's again think about what all values can we actually return from a function now let's say we have a return value variable here okay let's call the function at the moment okay i'll not pass anything and not return anything for now now by default what does any function return very good this return undefined right if i do console log of return value here if we get undefined here that's the default return value of any function in javascript right okay but we can change that by returning something explicitly let's return an explicit value of let's say uh, a string this time like hello world okay what happens in this case is uh, uh, outer function here will return a string which is then captured by this variable which we console log here then see that result right here okay and okay now what type of values can we return from a function we can return a string like this we can return a number like this we can return a null or undefined or we can return maybe an array we can return an object as well like this but we can also return another function so you know just like how a function can accept another function as an argument a function can return a function also okay the way we can do that is we'll simply define a function right here and this will do a console log of let's say a uh, return function called you okay, know this time this time what are we actually returning from the outer function we are returning a function itself okay we are not calling this function get we are simply returning it which is then captured inside this variable here correct now when i do when i invoke this function here what do we expect to be logged here when i do this guys what do i expect to be logged here yeah so we we log this thing here because this returned value here is nothing but this entire function right here okay which means when i'm calling this function i'm actually calling this function right here so there's no point of adding a function name here as you know because we are simply returning a function which is then captured inside a variable like this and this variable will become the name of this function correct now if i save the file i get this console log right here okay and just remember these three things which ultimately make a function what a first class citizen right what are the three things that make a first class citizen the first thing is we can assign a function as a value to a variable this is possible second thing is 
uh, we can pass a function as an argument to a function again. The third thing is we can return a function uh, from a function. If you think about this, a function basically behaves like any other value. It behaves like an array, an object, or it behaves basically like, uh, like a primitive value as well. But again, this is not common in other programming languages like Java and, and C++. It is possible only in languages like JavaScript here. It works in Python as well, but works in JavaScript especially uh, really well. Okay. Uh, so hence, uh, these three things make the functions a first class citizen. Okay. Yeah, so this is the summary of what I wanted to say. Again, the, like, uh, like two more points about functions is when you have a function which takes another function as an argument, that function is called the higher order function. So basically, you say function outer, uh, which takes another function and simply calls it like this. And we have a function inner. It simply does a console log of inner. I can call the outer function and I can pass the inner function like this. And now the thing here is this outer function is what we call the higher order function. Called a, called a higher order function. Uh, so it basically means that this function is capable of accepting other functions as arguments. That's what we call as a higher order function. Okay. And this function, which is being passed as an argument on another function, this is called as a callback function because it can be called back by this parent function, right? That's what a callback function basically means, guys. Okay. A callback function is completely owned by the parent function which means the parent function can decide when to actually call this function. Okay. Like, see, just because we have passed a callback function to a function here does not mean that the function should call this function for sure. Doesn't have to simply ignore it like this. It's totally possible, right? Just because you pass this inner function to order function does not guarantee that so outer function will call for sure. There's no guarantee like that. It's totally up to the outer function uh, as to when it will call it or if it will call it or, or uh, how many times it will call it. Okay. So it can actually call this function multiple times like this. It's totally possible. Or it can call it only once. Or it can do uh, an if condition only if it's true, then it will call it. Okay. Guys, the point here is once you pass a callback to a higher order function, it's up to this higher order function to uh, uh, to call this function. Abhi iska marzi hai ki when it will call this function, or how many times it will call this function, or based on which condition it will call this function. It's totally up to the outer function here. Okay, just remember that one point because. Uh, Next topic is all about the array callback methods. Okay. Wahapar, you'll if you understand this point here, na, you'll understand much more advanced topics, much easier. Okay. So again, like I said, the only point I'm trying to make here is once you pass a callback to a higher order function, it's up to the higher order function when to call it, how to call it. Uh, whether to call it or not, or how many times it calls, totally up to the outer function. Uska marze basically. So, iska kya hoga? It's totally up to the outer function. Yeah, just yaad rakhna bas. Theek hai na? Any questions, guys? Okay, guys. Uh, okay, now one more, one more topic is, uh, <clears throat> okay. basically, uh, so I'll tell you a very high level one, one time to say, so 
दिस इज जावास्क्रिप्ट इंजन राइट जावास्क्रिप्ट इंजन क्या करता है इट अंडरस्टैंड ओनली जावास्क्रिप्ट स्टफ लाइक doesn't understand a uh, stuff which is not part of javascript for example it understands whenever you uh, write let or cons or if condition or for all of those things okay but then there are a lot of things which are not part of the javascript ka specification now we spoke about what ecmascript is right so ecmascript is basically that big documentation uh, which Which contains all the information regarding what is actually part of JavaScript language, okay? Like what features actually constitute the programming language called JavaScript that is that is being presented inside the uh, ECMAScript for documentation, right? Is uh, is this point clear, guys? So basically, see, ECMAScript is nothing but it's called a specification or documentation basically which tells you ki what all features are actually part of javascript okay like anything which is not there here is officially not part of the javascript engine which means jo bhi ecmascript pe hai okay only those things are understood by the javascript engine okay but there are a lot of things which we actually use within our uh, within our javascript language which are not actually part of ecmascript but they still work the reason for that is there is this thing called as web api which is a separate thing okay this web apis are provided by the browser itself the browser provides them theek okay? hai now one of the functions which is part of web api set time out i will go into lot more detail about what web api is little bit later but i want to introduce what this function does okay now this function is actually not officially part of the javascript engine but it still works within a browser because abhi kya hota hai na so let's say we use this function okay tell me how this okay once okay once the javascript engine comes across this the javascript engine will go and it will ask uh, it class a web api platform ki uh, hey mujhe to i don't know what set time out is but you might know what that is so please run it that's what basically happens theek okay? hai because if you search within ecmascript you will not find anything related to set time out because set time out is not part of ecmascript it's actually part of web api which is provided by the browser itself which means the firefox or the chrome team they write the code for set time out because it is not provided by default by ecmascript now whenever javascript engine comes across a function which it doesn't understand it simply go and ask the web api platform which is which is basically nothing but the, the browser itself theek okay? hai let's see how the function actually works And what it does? Let's say that you want to run some code after a delay. Like run some code after a delay. That's all what uh, you want to do. So we can use a set time out, which is provided inside every single browser. And the first argument it takes is a function. Okay. now i know that this seems a little different but let's see what is happening so see within this thing oh wait i'll do one thing so i'll say that i create a function let's say logger let's say log after delay this function will simply do a console log of log log after delay okay of oh. simple function so far nothing special here now i'll do set time out now this accepts two arguments the first argument is a function itself which will be called after these many milliseconds of delay okay this is the function that will be called after these many milliseconds of delay okay let me give a 5 second which means 5000 milliseconds of delay Remember this five thousand milliseconds. I think about five seconds. 
ठीक है वॉट सेट एम और बेसिक बेल सी इट बेसिकली कॉल्स दिस फंक्शन आफ्टर दिस डिले वेरी सिंपल इट कॉल्स दिस फंक्शन आफ्टर दिस मच ऑफ डिले नो वेन हिट सेव ऑब्जर्व कि वन टू थ्री फोर एंड फाइव ठीक है तो आफ्टर फाइव सेकेंड इज वेन दिस फंक्शन विल बी कॉल्ड सो वेन एवर यू हैव एनी कोड दैट यू वॉन्ट टू रन आफ्टर ए डिले यू कैन यूज सेट टाइम आउट फॉर दैट The important point to remember here is set time mode is not directly part of ECMA script, which means JavaScript engine actually does not run it. So what it does is it will go and ask the browser itself, "Hey browser, uh, I don't know what set time mode is, so I'll let you uh, run this code on on your platform." So the browser will run this thing, not the JavaScript engine. Okay, so. See, this entire thing is is a browser basically. So, browser contains lot of things, including the JavaScript engine, and also the web API. Okay, so the browser itself, it contains the JavaScript engine along with the web API. So, if there is something which the JavaScript engine doesn't understand, it will go and ask the web API, <coughs> and then the code will be run basically. Okay, so a set time mode is nothing but it is used to run a function after this much amount of delay. Okay, guys, is this part clear? Madhur, I'll get to that. Don't worry. Ha. Huh. Now, instead of uh, creating a separate function here, now what I want to do is I want to basically copy this function or cut it from here. Okay, and paste it here. This is the same as before. Basically, after five seconds, we get this log printed here. Okay, so we can do this also. We can simply add the function directly here. Now, the set timeout is a higher order function, and this thing here is a callback function. Now, callback functions don't need to have a name. And hence, I'll simply remove the name here. Again, the set timeout is a higher order function, and this function here is a callback function. And like I said before, when you pass a callback to a higher order function, the higher order function can decide when to call it, how to call it, all of those things. In this case, this function decides to call this function after five thousand milliseconds. Okay. Now again, one more thing is this function is called the callback function. It's also called as the anonymous function because this function has no name, right? When there is no name, we call this as an anonymous function. Does it make sense? Okay, so uh, now similarly we'll do a set of uh, yes, we have another similar uh, function which is set interval. Now this has the same kind of uh, arguments. We pass a function as the first argument, which will be called be called after each interval. Now, what the set interval does is it will call this function every and after every these many seconds, which means see, if I'm saying one second, then this will be called every one second. If I'm saying two seconds, the function will be called every two seconds. When I hit save, see every two seconds, I'll get this uh, like one. It will be called again. It will be called again. Like that, if I reduce this to thousand, let's say, and we print this out every one second, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So, set interval. What it does is it calls this function every this interval. 
Now, it is possible to cancel this interval beach may, which we will learn when we talk about DOM. Okay, so it is definitely possible to interrupt this interval for sure. Don't worry about that. But if you don't, uh, if you do not interrupt it, it will just keep on going without stopping. Okay, so set time out. Kya karta hai ki after a particular delay, it runs a function. But set interval will run a function every interval. Like after every these many seconds, it'll run uh, this callback function. Okay. One important point I want you to look at is whenever you have a callback function which you're passing to a higher order function, make sure that the callback function doesn't have a name like this because there is no point of having a name here, right? So always make it an anonymous function like this. Okay, so I'm done for today. Do you guys have any questions for me? Because tomorrow is again a massive topic, a very big topic tomorrow. Remember, I spoke about ES6 may both sare uh, name uh, like new array methods that come. So we'll be talking about all of them tomorrow. But I want you guys to practice whatever I spoke about today because only if you practice whatever I spoke about today, uh, tomorrow's class will be much easier for you guys tomorrow. Okay. Okay, guys. Then I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night and take care. Bye bye. Uh, Keshav, uh, most probably this week. Okay. Bye, guys. Good night. Take care. Bye.